Okay, picking up from where we left off, I'm actually realizing that uh, this video is long overdue. But let's uh, proceed from where we left off. So in the last video, we created uh, this uh, name keep application where we've got the first name, middle name, last name, and email. These are some of the things that we wanted to add to our project. But we want to maybe play around with our look and feel so that uh, we make it a bit more colorful. And then we add the database uh, content uh, in this video so that at least we can see how we can do that. So for example, we can actually play around with certain things. Uh, let's say, for example, we want to put an icon. I can come here and then put uh, Windows icon download. Okay, uh, so we can actually play around with the icons. Let's just open this one and see what it gives us. We'll be working with the internet a lot so that we get some of the things that we need to get uh, in this particular lesson. But um, whilst that's loading, let's get into a little bit of the design. So as you can see, some of these things are not really aligned. We might need to play around with alignment so that uh, we see exactly where we want to put certain things. Uh, maybe we do that. Uh, we change that a bit. We then make our email line up to this one. Make our, la our last name line up to that one. We make our middle name line up to that particular po portion. And it's almost um, uh, standard or it's looking slightly better. Let's see our icons if they are showing. Okay, my internet is a bit on the slow side, but um, we will try and just get an icon that uh, we see. Let's uh, maybe get that one. I'm not sure why it's taking long. Okay, um, let's just leave that for now. So this is our, our design basically. So we can come to this folder and uh, maybe add the following. Uh, that is stored in my documents. Visual Studio 2015, I go to Projects, I go to Namekeep. Okay, in my Namekeep, I want to actually go into the actual folder and then create a database. So we go to New, we then select Microsoft Access Database, and then we call this Namekeep, so that we know the type of database we want to work with. Okay, so how we work with our databases now, we then want to just um, create a table that will then link to this particular application. So I can double click on my name keep so that I open the database. It's already saved as name keep. So whilst we wait for it, uh, oh, it actually happened faster than I expected. Okay, um, so we've got our name keep. Uh, so we enable our content. Um, so now we need to create a table. So basically how our databases work, depending on the type of content that we add to our application, we then need to have a table for each element that we'll be putting on uh, our application or in our application. So since we don't have many uh, elements that we'll be working with, we just need a single table for this particular application because it's a simple application that won't have too much to work with. So we can create a table and uh, we can save our table um, or, or rather, let's actually start from the beginning. We go to create. 
we then select table uh, in our table we right click and then we go to our data sheet view but to access our data sheet sheet view it will then tell us to save uh, no it's actually the design view my mistake so we now need to put the name of the table so we can call it tbl tbl and then we call it names like that we click on ok then we go back to our data sheet view or rather our design view so the first element that we need to add is uh, the ID so that we have a single ID for each name. So this helps reference each element that we want to be using within our application. So the next one would be our first name. The next one, uh, this will be uh, a short text. That's fine. We can put our middle name. can also be a short text text a uh, last name uh, would want an email okay uh, this we can then make a long text so the difference between these types of text is just the number of characters that we want to have within our application or within how we are working with our particular code so we can click on save and then uh, after saving it we can go back to our data sheet view so to then see how this works we can actually just add some content into this database so let's say for example I put a person whose name is Simba uh, Peter and then they've got uh, an email sp at gmail.com okay that then means I've entered the following content so I've got the name I've got the middle name I've got the last name I've got the email address and then you notice that uh, I now have a an ID which is one okay so that then means this is the first element that I've got I can also add a second name Patricia Shingi Zulu who also has an email which is PS Zulu at hotmail Okay, this then means I now have two elements within my database, which is the Simba and Patricia, and this is the content that I've put in my database. So I can actually save it, and then I close this file. I come back to my uh, application, as we can see. I can go back now to my save button where I then now need to create an object that connects to my database. Okay, so for that, we now need to have some extra code. Okay, um, an easier way to actually get to our database is to just get to the data sources. I can add a new data source. I select a database, I click on next, I select a data set, I also click on next. I then click on new connection. Uh, on new connection, I then select, uh, I want a mic Microsoft Access uh, database. I click on continue. I then now need to select my database. Okay. I click on browse. Uh, in my browse, I then need to locate where this content is saved. So Visual Studio 2015 projects 
name keep name keep i select name keep i click on okay there is no username or password so i can then test connection uh it then tells me the following uh asdb is not a is not registered on the local machine so this then means i can't use this particular connection to make my database work so i need to actually have a slightly different way of actually using this database or i can simply then try and get a, a service but this i'll need to um, create the service and make sure that uh, my database is connected so one other way we can do it uh, i'm not too sure about how we create an object we need to create an object that object then helps us to connect to a database file so one quick way of doing it i think i'll need some help here so that i can complete this lesson with no glitches so i type out connect to access 2007 database file in visual basic hopefully my internet won't let me down okay so we can just pick maybe three links and see what each link gives us okay this is giving us the data source uh, connection which is what gave us problems to begin with so we don't want that uh... okay um, these are also giving us Um, it's telling me something about the type of office that I've got. Let's just check what that is. Because um, uh, on what some of these guys are saying, it's telling me that uh, I may have the wrong version of office installed. Let's just check the type of office that we've got. Oh yes, they are right. I'm using office which is a 32-bit. I'm supposed to use an office, which is a 64-bit. Let's see here. But I should have both. Okay. Let's see if there's another way of doing it. Except all... Okay. One other way of actually making this work better is we can create a database that is similar but of a different type of uh, uh, extension okay like i can simply access i can simply do the following where i open my database the same way that i did uh, blank database Uh, I save it as 2002-2003 database and then um, and then I select the same location under my projects and then I call it N K, so that doesn't clash with the previous one. Okay, um, and then I enable content, and then I do exactly the same content that I did before, so that we can be able to match 
uh, what we need. Okay, so TBL, call that names. Click on OK. We then have a first first name. name we then have an email like that so these are short texts uh, we click on save we close our database we come back to the same data sheet we're supposed to now have a slightly better connection let's see we select our access database file click on continue we browse for the database, we select our NK, click on OK, we remove that, we test the connection, the connection succeeds. So in other words, um, okay, um, we then want to receive the content that we've got in the database. So we want to get our tables. Uh, click on finish and then now we've got uh, our database connection okay so that then means in this particular order we've actually created our data source so we might need to add another form that will then see how this can work and this would be something that we are trying to uh, see how we can be able to design this okay Maybe let's actually just do that now and see how we can create it the simpler way. So we need to select our name keep. We add a new item. And then in our new item, we then want to select a form. Windows form. We then use connected db okay and then we select this part and uh, here's how we we'll simply do it we'll drag our id we drag our first name we drag our middle name we drag our last name, we drag our email. Okay, um, this way we'll be able to do exactly the same content as we have in our design. The only difference now is this makes our content a little bit faster okay so we now need to add some content let's say we run this project um, maybe we actually made one simple mistake we're supposed to change the form that will be running uh, because as it stands we'll open the first form which is form one but not a big uh, pro problem okay so this is where we are uh, let's just uh, close it and uh, we go to project properties under project properties we then change and put connected db we start our project again so that we can see what each element does so we want to put the first id which is um one we want to put the same names that we had previously can't remember the surname let's just change it and then uh, sp moyo at gmail.com like that so we can then add a 
let's just put another set of information and so as it stands now we have added our content in a slightly poor way because I had entered the ID I'm not supposed to enter it's supposed to just um, give me an ID by itself so for example if I type again Peter Simba Moyo and then I put Peter dot Moyo at gmail dot com I can click on add or rather I'm supposed to click on add first before I start typing so let me just enter dummy data so that you guys see okay so now if I then go back I can see what each element contains okay so in our in the working of our project it's now working if I come back to my access file I'm supposed to see what I would have added so this then means uh, at this particular point there's nothing because maybe I didn't save it uh, let's just run it and put information and then try and save our content no we actually said before we do this we need to add first and then we put our content And then we need uh, our email. And gmail.com. We then save. We add again. We put gmail.com like that we add another content we'll just put the dummy data we then save and then maybe we test and see what content is there we close it uh, let's reopen this database and see if all is in order okay Okay, it's not saving to our database but at least the connection is working maybe in the next lesson we will see how to actually make this work or how to make this content uh, stick to our database so that's how we we can connect to our database uh, there's a little bit of an error somewhere I'll need to figure out what it is but in the next lesson we will uh, correct 